Looks good. You know, Stan did really good this morning. Yeah, I was proud of him. We're going to get through this, babe. I know. But things will never be the same again. It will be better. It's just hard right now. But we'll be stronger when it's all over. Stronger than we've ever been before. I was thinking of, of what you said the other day. How you felt that, that God was gonna do something. But who would have ever dreamed that it would come like this? What is that? It's a text. From who? I don't recognize the number. It is. I'm not laughing. Brother Dennis, this is amazing. Well, when you've batched around as long as I have, you either learn to cook or you learn where all the good restaurants are. <laughs> but I'm sure you know all about that. Yes, I do. That's true. Brother Stan, if you don't mind my asking, Whatever happened to Mrs. Hayes? Mrs. Hayes? If you don't want to talk about it. No, no, that's, that's fine. Mrs. Hayes wasn't happy when Mr. Hayes started following the message. Hmm, I see. She just couldn't see it and wanted nothing to do with it or me once she realized that I was in it for the long haul. It's, it's admirable to see a man make such a sacrifice for his faith. I know it had to be a rough time. Well, not just on me. We had a son who was only seven years old. I asked her to at least try to make it work for his sake, but she made up her mind. So I spent the next few months in court fighting for the custody of my son. Did you win? No. No, so for, well, for two years, my son went back and forth between her and me until she finally consented custody to me when he was nine years old. I tried being both father and mother to him, but kid needs both. So true. To divorce is selfish and proves you don't love your children correctly, if at all. So where's your son now? He's in college in California. Loves the Lord. Believes the message with all his heart. Brother Stan, may I be candid with you? Sure. How many of our young people do you think really believe the message? Well, I would say the vast majority of them at least believe it. Hmm. Well, I had the pleasure of eating lunch with our precious sister Julia on Sunday. I noticed that. Very spiritual young lady. Julia? Spiritual? <laughs> well, maybe just merely the first impression, but... She's expressed some concerns about your teaching that I felt could easily be remedied. Concerns like what? Well, some of our churches down south have adopted a formula of the message. That would explain Brother Branham's teachings in a little more philosophical way. Some of our young people find that Brother Branham's hillbilly way of speaking rather difficult at times to follow. <laughs> Brother Dennis, this message is about the most unphilosophical message there is. Exactly my point. 
Sometimes I, I often find myself wishing that Brother Brandon would just speak a little bit more clear and, and, and on, on, on certain events that he would refer to. Like what? You know, it was Brother Brenham's loose way of storytelling, misinformation of dates and times and numbers that has really opened up the door to these groups on the internet, finding mistakes in his teachings and, and digging up the fact that there really is no proof to back up some of his stories, that many healings were exaggerated. Brother Dennis, let me tell you something. As a believer of this message, I couldn't care less what those unbelievers on the internet are saying. They're not worth being dignified with an acknowledgement. <laughs> well, I agree with you to a point, but the fact is, you don't know those things, but our youth does. And how are they supposed to respond to it? They're to respond to it the same way Jesus did. It is written, God's prophets make no mistakes. That's the end of it. If you argue with that nonsense, they'll have you arguing all night long. Just ignore it and move on. I believe that you are missing the point, Brother Stan. The fact is, our youth are already struggling in the first place. But why are they struggling? That's the question. You're not saying the problem is with the young people. You're saying the problem is with the message. I'm not stupid, Burton. What kind of a pastor would you be to ignore something that is destroying the faith of your youth? I'm not. I'm doing everything I can to hold this church and these young people together. But what you're saying is ludicrous to think that the message needs a crutch or some little cleaning up in order for our youth to get anything out of it. If they got the Holy Ghost, they would know exactly what Brother Branham is saying. In fact, sir, the only faith destroying around here seems to be coming from you. You know as well as I do that Brother Branham talked in riddles sometimes and didn't even understand some of his own visions. How are the children then to understand? This conversation's going on. I think it's best I leave. <sighs> Brother Stan, I didn't need to offend. I... Thank you for dinner. It was great. One, one last thing. You say Brother Branham's hillbilly language is hard for today's youth to understand? If they would get their noses out of their phones and tablets, sit down and pray and listen to a message long enough till God would open up their eyes to it, they wouldn't have a problem. But it seems strange they never mentioned that to me before. My honest opinion, Dennis, is that you're a liar. You know nothing about my young people. But I think the kids that go around and talk about selfies and LOL, homeboy, kid, like a boss, beast, sit, tight, cool, wicked, yellow, jacked, cracked, and all this stupid way that they talk today. And then you have the audacity to say they have a hard time understanding a hillbilly from Kentucky. That's just plain stupid. Good night. Good night. Oh man, I'm sorry. You guys, I just cleaned the car. I won't be seeing you guys on Sundays for a while. Why not? I made the team. <laughs> yeah, you made the team because your dad's coaching. <laughs> <laughs> no, You're so that's mean. Not it. <laughs> Anyways, my games are on Sundays, so. So, didn't you tell him you're a Christian? Nope. Jay, your first priority on Sunday should be church, dude. And can you please stop talking with your mouth full? You're pelting me with crumbs over here. We should tell my dad that. Not talk with his mouth full? No. <laughs> tell him that church is our priority. You tell him. Why is it so wrong for him to play on Sunday? It isn't right. You know, everybody thinks they're the ones that's right. How do they know? How does anybody know? I'm so sick of hearing about power and truth, and yet no one is able to explain even the simplest contradictions in the message. What? Jules, what are you talking about? I'll tell you, and it's the stuff Stan won't. Brother Stan? Ask Brother Stan about this. Brother Branham had a vision where he said that 16 men were killed while building the municipal bridge over the Ohio River. There are people that have searched and searched and can't find any documentation that anyone has even hurt during the building of that bridge. So? What does that prove? If it happened, don't you think there'd be some kind of record? Hello? And also, there are preachers in the message that say Brother Branham wasn't even on sunset at the time he claimed the seven angels came down. What is your point, Julia? My point is, why do these great teachers of ours not address these things? Maybe because they don't think they need to. 
people say that Moses never crossed the Red Sea and that David probably never existed. But, I mean, why teach on that? I mean, who cares what they think? It's all be believed by faith, not proof. I just think it would be in our best interest to know what we're sacrificing our time for. What we're sacrificing fun and games for. Why can't you play ball on Sunday? And why can't you date a boy that you know deep down that you really like? Really? Shut up, Jay. I'm just saying, guys. Don't you think it's worth finding out? I'm not talking about this anymore. Those Gentile warriors, many of them, but they know that that fugitive was anointed. They knew David was rejected by his own people, but they know the anointing was on him. They could see it. So they stood right by his side, die or live. They were gallant men. No matter how much the outside world didn't believe it, his own people kicked him out. They didn't want nothing to do with him. Look at these men. They pulled their swords. What was it? His desire was a drink of cool water. David, what a type of today. Amen. Oh, come stand with me by my side. I'm standing in a terrible place. I challenge today these tapes go over the world. I challenge some man, some lawyer who loves Jesus Christ that knows that these things has got to be fulfilled today. Brethren, come stand by my side and pull the word of God. Pull the fresh word of God. Let's give Jesus a good drink of fresh Pentecostal water. That's his desire today. His prophesied we do so in Malachi, the fourth chapter. Return the faith of the children back to the fathers again. Hello? Brother Stan? Sophia, what's up? Brother, do you have a minute? Absolutely, what's going on? I don't really know how to say this, but the youth really needs your prayers right now. A lot is going on since Pastor Richards left, and it seems like a lot of the parents are using it as an excuse to backslide. And the youth, the youth are just- Sophia, honey, look, I, I really appreciate you calling me, but this really isn't news to me. I know this is happening, and, and I'm, I'm praying about it like I never have before. But Brother Stan, it just seems like a huge wall of doubt is surrounding us, and I don't know what to do. Sophia, do you trust me? Sophia. Brother Stan, I... Never mind. Have you checked out those quotes on the sacred sands? No, I haven't. I could tell. Brother Stan, I need answers now, and I don't think I can just sit down and listen to a tape right now. I need answers right now. I'm getting so confused. Sophie, honey, listen to me. You're doing the very thing the devil wants you to do. That's why you're so upset. The way he fights is by getting you to doubt your weapon. Girl, that's the only weapon he's got, by making you doubt your weapon. If he gets you to doubt your weapon, which is the word, then the fight's over. You're done. Sweetheart, you're looking for some great big 
larger than life answer. And it doesn't come that way. That's why it's so easy for the devil to get people, even believers, away from the truth. Because it's so, so simple. So stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to figure out why you're feeling what you're feeling. Just go listen to those tapes like I asked you. Nothing else is important. Okay, brother Stan. Okay, thank you. You think she listened to the quotes? No. She didn't. I could tell by how she said goodbye she hadn't gotten the answer she was looking for. I wouldn't be surprised if Burton has something to do with this. Lord willing, I'm gonna hit that thing. I don't mean to change the subject, but you said something about some texts. Yeah. What's going on with that? I've been getting these strange texts from someone I don't know, mm. and the number can't be traced back. What are they saying? They're saying someone is trying to destroy our church. <laughs> Please. That's the understatement of the year. I wouldn't be surprised if Burton has something to do with that. You think he'd do that? Well, I don't know. I can't say for sure, but I do know he had something with pushing the pastor over the edge, even though he was already teetering. But he's been talking to Julia Majors. I got a problem with that. Hey guys, I think we're being followed. What was that? It's a text. She checking up on you? Whoa. What? What are they saying? Basically confirming that we are being followed and it's not because they want our autograph. This says they will kill us if they catch us. I think I can lose him, though. If not, maybe she should call the police. Maybe she should try calling the police first, and then try losing them. How's that? Come on, Nate. Where's your sense of adventure? My sense of adventure is reserved, especially when it comes to car chases. Really reserved. You're such a Methodist. You know, calling the police is probably not a bad idea. You go ahead. This cat mouse thing ain't working for me. You need to make this thing move. Well, there's a slight problem with that. This is not good. They're right behind us, bro. We need to get out of the line of fire. Are we toast? Okay, guys, I'm going for it. Going for what? Just pray. He's not 
not slowing down. He's not gonna let me get in front of him. We're not gonna make Just it. Be praying. Hey man, I'm praying, fasting. I'm even making some promises back up in here. But if you get a centimeter closer to this semi, I'm gonna be checking this man's tire pressure. Help us, Lord Jesus! But what did the police say? They basically said they can't or won't do nothing about it. Description we gave fits too many vehicles. We got no license plate. And there was no witnesses to these people shooting at you in a busy freeway? Apparently not. Babe, we've already been through this with the police. There's nothing we can do. But who are they? And what do they want? They could still be looking for you. I know it. The police are watching the house. There is nothing else we can do about it. <gasps> Listen. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. God protected us through this. We're trusting in Him, okay? Okay. Good. Babe, I really think I should come home. No, babe. I feel I feel better with you and the babies being away with all this going on. I know Al's worried about his family. It's just one less thing that I have to worry about. But what about all the texts Al's getting? What's up with that? I don't know. I really don't. Right. Okay, Mom. Babe, I, I gotta go. Okay, babe, you do that. I'm gonna get cleaned up and hit the pillow. Okay, I love you. All right, I love you too, babe. Good night. Okay, night night. You know, everybody thinks they're the ones that's right. How do they know? How does anybody know? No one is able to explain even the simplest contradictions in the message. You just prove yourself to be one of the weak ones like the rest. God. 
What am I doing? But if you really want to stand out, it's because you're different and they know it. You're doing the very thing the devil wants you to do. That's why you're so upset. The way he fights is by getting you to doubt your weapon. If it happened, don't you think there'd be some kind of record? Hello? Why do these great teachers of ours not address these things? And why can't you date a boy that you know deep down that you really like? I no longer follow the so-called message of the hour. And I no longer believe William Branham. And I no longer believe God. William Branham to be a prophet. To be a prophet God. entire life or something and then wake up one day and realize it was all wrong think of the things you would miss out on there are a lot of sites on the internet Sophia that point out so many mistakes that brother Brennan made mistakes in his teaching stories that he told that have absolutely no proof that they ever even really happened these are people that had been in the message and now they themselves see they have been misled I mean your own pastor. If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't even know of William Branham. And now he himself calls it wrong. Julia, why are you doing this? Because I realize that things I've been missing out on in life are because of something that isn't even real. But you don't know that. And neither do you. That's what I'm saying, Soph. Do you want to go the rest of your life wondering what you missed out on because you felt too afraid to walk away from what could be a false prophet? I'm not talking about this anymore. Sophia, I'm just trying to help you see what I'm seeing. She's not interested in seeing what you're seeing. Don't interrupt, Walter. I already have. Quit talking about the prophet like that. Oh, come on! Can you really tell me this message has helped you with your little problem? I haven't given it the chance to. But that's not the message's fault. That's not God's fault I haven't completely surrendered. I may not be who I should be, but one thing I know is this message is the truth, no matter how right or wrong I may be personally. I think you've accepted something as fact for so long, you don't even know what you believe anymore, or why. Hey guys, dessert's ready. Hey Wally, how you doing buddy? I'm good. Hey, did you ever get around to uh, reading those quotes Brother Stan gave you? I tried Brother Nate. I just couldn't get to it. Yeah. That's one of the things the devil fights his hardest on the most is finding time for the Lord. Brother Nate? Sir? How do you surrender?
Well, Wally, let me ask you this. What if you was in trouble? You had done something wrong. And you was running from the police. And you could wear yourself out doing that. You could wear yourself out running because you're holding on to that possibility that you might get away. But let's say your day had come and you find yourself on the other end of a police officer's pistol pointed right at your head. What would you say? I give up. Exactly. What does it mean to give up? Surrender. It means you have ran long enough and you've given up on the idea of ever getting away. You ain't running no more. Now you're gonna deal with the harsh realities and deal with the wrongs that you've committed. And no matter what the outcome or what happens, you've decided to lay down your rights to run and you've given up all your rights to another. Wally, son, surrendering is realizing you cannot do it yourself. You don't even try anymore. You simply give it to God and say, Lord, I cannot do this. You're my only hope. Wally, there is a warrior inside each of us. And it's faith that calls that warrior into action. But your faith will always be weak if you're not exercising it in the word of God. Prayer and time in the word is the only way that God can get our faith to the place where it needs to be to overcome. Hearing is believing, hearing the word of God. Brother Branham said our most powerful weapon we have is prayer. Get into them tapes and start praying and asking God for that hidden life relationship. I'm telling you, Wally, it'll hold you more than anything else. It'll anchor you. And it'll give you victory over them things that's binding you. Trust me. I know from personal experience. Brother Dennis, what a surprise. Sorry I didn't call first, Brother Stan, but I, I happen to be in the area and we really need to talk. We do? Um, okay. All right, come on in. Brother Stan, to be candid, I wish to ask you a few questions as pertaining to our last conversation. Well, if I recall, our last conversation ended on a bad note. So to pick up on that conversation would mean to start on a bad note. <laughs> I love how you put words together like that. No, I wish to ask you one question. Okay. What would you say if I were to tell you that I have documented evidence to prove that Brother Branham gave false interpretations to many events he referred to throughout his ministry. You seriously came all the way over here to ask me a question like that? Stan, you have a congregation of wonderful people. Wonderful young people. I would think that you would want to investigate the truth as much as possible. Brother Benham said that there were papers that documented the light that came over his head in the Ohio River. Well, find those papers. Document it. Where was he really when the cloud ring came down in 63? How can you look at these obvious fallacies of a man's ministry and continue to teach his teachings to truth-seeking innocent people? I know in whom I have believed. Can you say the same, Mr. Burton? Your methods may have worked on Pastor Richards, but they won't on me. Our discussion has come to an end.
There came a time in David's life when Absalom rose up and stole the hearts of the people of Israel and began to turn them against God's one anointed man. And David fled Jerusalem. As he walked up the Mount of Olives, he wept, a rejected king. Several hundred years later, the son of David, our Lord Jesus, walked up that same mountain, a rejected king, weeping over the city. But in reality, it was Christ that was rejected both times because Christ was in David. That was God's anointed man of the hour. And to reject that anointed man was to reject God himself. We know these things. We have for years. But it appears that the great shining light that is our faith is being tested. It appears that those who have not eyes to see or ears to hear are seeking to deafen and blind those around them with their doctrines of lies and contradictions. So I want to ask you all something here this morning. What is it that holds you to what you stand for? Why do you believe what you believe? Is it because it's what you've always been taught? Is it because you know nothing else? Is it because your parents or your pastor have always told you so? Or is it because you have had your own personal experience with it yourself and because of that, you cannot help believe what you believe? If you had a relationship with somebody that you loved so much that you both shared your innermost secrets together, you knew this person inside and out because of the relationship you both had together, then what if someone came along and tried to tell you that none of it ever really happened? If you were no longer in that relationship, you should still have enough memories to know that it was real. But even then, you just might be able to be convinced that the relationship never happened. But what if you were still in the relationship? You still saw your lover every moment of the day. If that was the case, this person wouldn't stand a chance of deceiving you. They're obviously trying to convince you of something that they know nothing about. And these people that go around and try to tell us that they have seen the light and that Brother Branham and the message is wrong. Do you think that's going to shake the faith of someone that's still in the relationship with Christ? Hidden under the Shekinah glory? No one in whom they have believed and no one the true power that lays on those tapes? They might shake the faith of someone that's ended the relationship, but not those that are still in it. Their faith will strengthen all the more. Ask any Muslim. It would not enter their minds to question their Quran or their prophet. Yet how many in the Meshits tear down the very prophet they claim to follow? They corrupt the very message they claim to believe. What the denominations have done to the Bible, so has men done to this message. But now they have these groups coming out of the message and trying to pull everyone else along with them. What I'd like to ask him is this. What are you pulling the people to then? Where is the true Christ then? To wherever they would point me, I would ask this. How do you know? Furthermore, how should I know? Because you tell me so? Well, then I'm right back listening to a man again. So what they're saying is I shouldn't listen to Brother Branham, but I should listen to them. I can say to whatever they're preaching, how do they know? What sort of experience can you show me that I should listen to you? How are you any different from any other denominational idea out there or that's been out there for years? Can you answer the question that this message is answered for me? What Christ can you point me to that's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Show me where this message failed to lift Christ up out of history like no denominational had a clue to do. Show me in any group or person that has made the Bible so real in this very day that we live in outside of William Branham. You haven't left the message for truth. You left the truth for denomination. That isn't anything to be proud of. Unbelievers have done that since Cain killed Abel. You think your little stand is some unique honorable quest when in reality the devil's laughing at you. When in reality the devil's laughing at them and doesn't even worry about them anymore. That's why they feel such freedom. 
It's not godly liberty. It's cruise control to hell because they've been marked a finished work of the devil. If someone truly found a truth that caused them to leave something else, they would spend their time promoting the great truth that they had just found. But when all they do is talk bad about what they came out of, it just shows they didn't find the truth at all. They just came out of what they didn't believe anyways. And they're trying to pull these people out of what they call Egypt, but they have no promised land to take them to. They're all gonna die in the wilderness, just like the false teachers did back in Jesus' day. They left the true Christ for a worldly denominational Christ, which is the devil. And I can say like the prophet said, their argument is thinner than the broth made out of the shadow of chicken and starved to death. If you just take your own mind to thinking, reasoning like Eve did at the beginning, they can explain everything in the Bible away from you. But if a man or a woman has ever been on the backside of the desert in those sacred sands where no intellectual can stand, and there come in contact with the living God, no devil or scientist or anything else can ever explain that away. You were there. It happened. You know it's the truth. There's no one can take it away from you. You met God. Amen. You've been struggling, haven't you? A little, but God has kept me. I know he has. Mom, this whole tragedy that has happened in some ways has helped me. When Pastor Richards fell away, my mind was filled with so many questions like, what have I been holding on to all this time? Why have I kept myself from the world and allowed myself to be made fun of and ridiculed? The devil was telling me it was all for nothing. I felt like, I felt like I was hanging off the side of a cliff and I didn't want to hold on any longer. But that night, I let go and I expected to fall, but I didn't. I never moved. I was still there. And then God showed me that I hadn't been holding on the whole time. He was holding on to me. And I realized that I hadn't been keeping myself from my pastor or anybody else. I hadn't been serving the Lord for somebody else because of somebody else's experience. I realized that night that what was holding me was my own personal experience with God. And so it didn't matter even if my own pastor backslid. He wasn't what was holding me. It was God holding me all along. I'm so proud of you, sweetie. You were right. I was wrong, and you were right. I've talked with your father. We're putting you back in homeschool. Well, that's what I've been praying for. Thank you. Brother Stan, your coffee. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, awesome. babe. Thank you. Okay, so when Moses returned to the children of Israel in Egypt, how did they know God had appeared to him in a burning bush? They had no witnesses in Sinai. They had no choice. 
but to take the word of one man. Exactly. True that. I don't need no news articles and no doctor's records to confirm my faith. On an already vindicated prophet of God. Exactly. Yep. They're just doing to the message what learned men have been doing to the Bible for centuries. They keep going that direction, they'll eventually become all out atheists, yes. not believing in anything. Yep. They're closing in on you. Reply. Then you have to help us tell us who you are? I can't at this time. All I can say is be careful. How do you know this mystery person is not one of the thugs trying to kill us? Why, Julia, why do you look so scared? You're not scared, are you? It takes a brave girl to come out here all by herself. You are by yourself, aren't you? <clears throat> yes. Good. Don't mind them. They're just my uh, bodyguards. So tell me, Julia, you haven't been doing too well with Sophia. I tried. It, it seemed like I was getting through, but what, I. But what? It, it wasn't working. And besides, I'm not really sure if I'm your person. Why not? What, what Brother Stan said on Sunday morning, it really seemed to make a lot of sense to me, and mm. I, I. Well, I'm not interested in what. What it seemed like, dearie. You could be a great help to me, young lady, but there's a slight rule of protocol that I failed to mention to you earlier. When I make myself known to someone, it is because I trust them. And if ever in our relationship I begin to feel threatened in any way, well, I'm not too fond of threats. 
Listen to me, you stupid girl. I will have your help whether you like it or not. I'll, I'll help you, I will. I'll, I'll go see Sophia right now. Sophia? <laughs> Child, I'm not really interested in Sophia. You're not? Of course not. You think I really care about Stanford Hayes and his little group of fanatics? I've just been having fun while searching for what I'm really after. What, what is that? How well do you know Alberto Mendez's family? Brother Burton? Um, hi. Hello, Sister Sarah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. Just wonderful. Um, what can I do for you? Well, I was in the area and I, uh... I know where you live, so I thought that I would stop by and say hi. But Brother Al isn't here. Yes, Sister. I know Al isn't here. <sighs> so you stopped to see me? <gasps> Why not? Hmm, uh, you know, brother, I have the stove on, and I need to... Sister Sarah, I'm disappointed in you. What? You know the stove isn't on. You just want me to go away. I apologize, brother. I did just say that. And that is because I do want you to go away. Please, give this to your husband when he comes home. Okay, babe. We'll be there shortly. I'm just glad you're okay. Okay. Love you too. Would you hold the ladder, please? What you think I'm doing? I think you're daydreaming is what I think you're doing. Oh, come on. Stop crying, you big baby. Oh, I'll give you big baby. You want me to break out some moves right now? <laughs> you move, you'll break something. Okay. That was a good one. You like that? Yeah, I did. That was really good. I know yeah. you liked it. So Burton paid Sarah a visit, did he? Sounds like he really scared her. Him and I need to have a little talk. You know where he lives? Sure do. Here we go again. What's he saying? He says he wants to meet with us. Alberto, this is craziness. We don't even know who these people are. Ugh, it could be the ones that were shooting at you. They themselves have said they're trying to kill you. I know that, babe. Then why don't you just call the police? This is crazy. Babe, the police will only scare the guy away. And then what are we gonna do? Good guy or bad guy? He seems to know what's going on. So we're gonna meet with him. I love you. Pray for us. I love you too. You know I will. <laughs> 